Hi, once again, I am back uh, with the yet another module of IT Infrastructure Library. And in this module, we would speak about uh, the vital four dimensions of service management. These would be acting as the pillars on which the entire service uh, uh, framework would uh, stand and deliver the outstanding services to the customers. So these uh, important four dimensions are uh, organizations and people, information and technology, partners and suppliers, and value streams and processes. So any service management infrastructure would need each of these four dimensions to be able to craft a service which could be valuable to the end consumer. Let's go through each one of them one after another and understand deeper uh, what is uh, their implications and what are they consisting of. So the first one is uh, organizations and people. And when we think of organizations uh, and people, we would come across uh, some of the important aspects of it. One, important of a formal organization to be able to provide a service. Whenever we think of people, culture would be an integral part of uh, you know, people and it would be impacting how services are constructed and how services are delivered to the end customers. Here, we would also be bothered with what are the roles and responsibilities of the people who are providing these services and what are their competencies, what are the skills that they are carrying. So uh, that was about the uh, organizations and people. And whenever we think of the culture, which is a, an inseparable part of people management, the culture itself would be consisting of several other ingredients. And that would be a shared value system. The people, the team which is involved in delivering the services, they would have a shared value system and they would have a common bonding to be able to represent an organization and to be able to provide uh, uh, meaningful services to the end consumer. Communications would play a very important role. As we understand, any service management would involve uh, people, right? people would be involved in different ways in providing the services. So communications would play a very important role in, uh, in ensuring that uh, there is the right kind of commitment towards uh, delivering the good quality of services. Trust and transparency obviously would play a very important role because uh, whenever we interact with people, uh, these two factors, trust and transparency, they go hand in hand and uh, they create a special bonding uh, which helps you in uh, you know customizing your services for the end consumers when we uh, think of uh, people and uh, their various aspects of people how it is being positioned across uh, service management uh, these some of these factors become very important communications and collaboration ensuring that the people are skilled enough and they're competent to provide the right services, ensuring that people are having a very deep understanding of the subject in which they pose themselves as an expert, ensuring that the team which is providing the services, they have a shared value system. And uh, this common objective and a shared value system would help them provide good quality of services. So that was the dimension one, organizations and people. Now we'll go to the our next dimension, which is information and technology. We understand very well in today's context that information and technology would play a vital role in providing any kinds of service, any kind of service that you can think of. It could be an IT services, it could be even a non-IT service. For example, banking services, logistic services, all of them would require a dependence on IT. Because if you think of banking services, uh, banks in today's context cannot operate without their uh, uh, you know, systems being in place, without the important core banking applications work functioning uh, properly, without their ATMs functioning properly, and so on. So banks are uh, strategically heavily dependent on the IT services being available. And that is true for other services as well. Maybe logistics services, manufacturing, each of these would be dependent on IT. And information and technology 
would play a vital role. Now, when we think of uh, information and technology, uh, one important aspect is, uh, you know, we will not be going deeper from the perspective of service management, but uh, people who would be experts in providing the IT services, they would be going deeper into each one of these and understand them uh, very well, how an optimal uh, positioning of the IT would be important for uh, delivering these services. The third important dimension is uh, partners and suppliers. But we all understand that for providing good quality of services, we would need uh, many of the backup agreements, back-to-back -back agreements with various partners and suppliers. For example, if uh, let's say I come from uh, IBM as an IT service provider, I have to have uh, backup uh, services from spare parts uh, provider like Dell, right? I have to have uh, you know Wi-Fi services being available from another telecom service provider. I have to have uh, uh, clear uh, uh, underpinning contracts available from uh, these uh, suppliers and these partners. Without that, it would not be possible for me, for, for the organization like IBM, to provide services to its clients. So when we think of various partners working together in a service management framework, each of these become very important. For example, availability of these services, right? Availability of the partner services that will allow me, my organization, to deliver services to my clients. Reliability on these services, to what extent I can rely on their availability, how timely they uh, handle the breakdowns, how is their overall service performance over a period of last day, couple of years, what is the timeliness, how quickly they recover the service, how well they are timed with regard to the availability of the services, what is the level of accuracy that they provide, are they able to maintain kind of professional, uh, uh, you know, uh, structure to their service availability. And uh, can we rely on that uh, service uh, components to a certain extent? All that would be part of the accuracy of the services. And what is the relevance of these services for my uh, overall service infrastructure? Do I need these services uh, all the time? Or it's okay if some of the times it's not available, right? So the third dimension, which is partners and suppliers, would play a very important role. Uh, and uh, to be able to get these services, I would have various partnerships with uh, various suppliers and partners. I might uh, strike an agreement with each one of them, uh, a legal contract, so that I could rely on the services and the services are available as and when I want. Another thing that must be noted is that uh, when I'm uh, dealing with the suppliers and partners, and I myself uh, is a service provider, uh, one of these organizations will become a primary integrator or a service integrator. So with the, with the end customer, it would be my organization that would be dealing, and I would have back-to-back -back arrangements with other suppliers. I would make sure that my customers are not uh, uh, interacting with my suppliers. My customers are interacting with me only, and I am able to front end uh, my organization with the uh, service consumer organization. And then I would be acting as a service integrator. The fourth dimension, and probably one of the most important one, is ensuring that the right processes are in place. And then only, the services would be available to the end customer. And these uh, processes might include uh, the IT service processes. It would be, for example, if it's the IT services being made available to a large customer, let's say like Walmart, uh, I should must have the right kind of processes. For example, incidents management, change management, problem management. I should have these services well laid out, well structured, and with the right kind of accountability and the ownership set uh, properly. Then only it would be possible for me to ensure that uh, my services are available to my end customer. I might also create certain value streams. Value streams are uh, you know, uh, a series of steps 
that could provide certain value to the end consumer. It could be, for example, when they have raised a help desk ticket, I must let them know that uh, my team is working on, with, uh, on the ticket and um, uh, there, there should be uh, periodically emails uh, being sent to the concerned person who has raised the help desk ticket so that the right kind of uh, engagement and uh, confidence could be developed uh, amongst the service consumers about the availability of these services. So that was uh, in this module. And uh, I'll come back with the next module in, uh, uh, in the, my next video.